remember the things you've heard or learned and then put it into song where you are sat. Yeah, just for your ears to hear. The way you're sat, put it into song quickly. Let's go for it. Amen. In the song, in the song. Put it into song, put it into song, put it into song. Yeah, so you take your note in case you don't know what to do. You just take your note, take a line of a note that ministers much to you and sing it. Start with that, just sing that. You put the word of God into melody. Hallelujah. I know you reach the wall through me. Mm. I know you reach the wall through me. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go. Declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go. Declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go. Declare the good news. Give myself unto your will. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. Give myself unto your will. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news, give myself unto your will. I go, I go, I go, I go to preach. Hey, I go, I go, I go. I go to preach. I go, I go, I go to preach. I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. Give myself unto your will I will go I go I go I go to preach I go I go I go I go to preach I'm a laborer I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I'm a laborer, I'm a laborer, I go. I'm a laborer, I go declare the good news. I go, I go, I go, I go. 
I go to preach. I will go. I will go. I will go. I will go to preach. I will go. I will go. I will go. I will go to preach. I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer. I go. I'm a laborer. Go declare the good news. I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer. I go. I'm a laborer. Declare the good news. I give myself. Give myself to do your will. I go, I go, I go, I go to preach. I go, I go, I go, I go to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. That was my own song. You have yours, right? You give yourself to this stuff. You make it your melody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, like, let's give it a go. 720 or 528. Praise God. Let's agree in prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we do lend our spirits to the spirit of the living God within us, that out through the vessel of our being, you pour forth your wisdom with mighty clarity. Father, we do thank you for we have wisdom revelation and the knowledge of that spirit that you've so richly given to us in redemption. Father, we believe and we receive that the burden of ignorance is dematerialized to your glory. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Well, come with me to Romans and chapter 4. Romans and chapter 4. Romans in chapter 4. Glory to God. Mm, glory to God. The word is spreading through me. Mm, glory to God. The word is spreading through me. Glory to God. The word is spreading through me. Glory, glory to God, the word is spreading to me. Glory to God, glory to God, I partner with the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God, I partner with the Lord. I partner with God. Hey, hey, glory to God. I partner with the Lord. Glory, glory, glory to God. I partner with the Lord. Glory to God. You see, that's what you do. You just take what you know, what you've heard in the word of God, you make it into melody. Put a spring in your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God, the gospel prevails to me. Yeah. Glory to God, the gospel forever. Glory to God, oh, the gospel prevails to me. Glory to God, glory to God, the gospel prevails to me. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm not singing for CD. I'm not singing to get myself word excited. Glory to God. You see, I lend my energies, I lend my emotions. Amen. There's a song we sing in Grace Place. Where the younger old. I give my energy to things divine. Da, 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 da. Where the young or old, I give my energy to things eternal. De, de, de. Hey. Where the young or old, 
I give my energy to things divine. Hey, 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 where the younger rolls, I give my energy to things eternal. Hey, hey, where the younger rolls, I give my energy to things divine. Hmm, hmm, ooh, whoa, oh. My energy to things eternal. It just says, whether young or old, I give my energy to things divine. Whether young or old, I give my energy to things eternal. Hey, whether young or old, I give my energy to things divine. Hey, hey. whether young or old, I give my energy to things eternal. Hey, listen. My energy is yours. Uh, 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 uh. My passion is yours. Uh, uh, uh. My energy is yours. Uh, uh, uh. My passion is yours. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, uh. My energy is yours. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, uh. My passion is yours. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, uh. My energy is yours. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, uh. My passion is yours, hey, uh -huh, uh -huh. again, where the younger rolls, I give my energy to things divine, where the younger rolls, oh, I give my energy to things eternal, my energy, hey, hey. my energy is yours, uh -huh, uh -huh. my passion is yours, hey, uh -huh, uh -huh. My energy is yours, hey. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yours. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where the younger road, I give my energy to things divine. Where the younger road, I give my energy to things eternal. What a young old, where the younger road. I gave my energy to things divine. Mm -hmm. Where the younger roll, I gave my, my energy to things eternal. My energy, my energy is yours. Uh -huh. My passion is yours. Uh -huh. My energy is yours. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. My passion is yours. Hey. Hey, where the young give my energy to turn the vine? Where the young roll, I give my energy to turn the tunnel. Give my energy to things eternal. My energy. My passion is yours. Uh -huh. My energy is yours. Uh -huh. My passion is yours. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Da 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 di da 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 do. Tish the mangarevalo, 
Hir bara bara dis to karama He gam brandin shangam bando e gaya doga base E ramande listo katre ya logo sture valama E more gista la gradi yo stole vare mandale gadi E gadis to karama nagada golobo logo da de dis to garabando din den bomban den den da Ready gets the call of a rabbit, the gallop of the goddish in Mandel Goste. He revered all the Monday English to Gamboroga di the by. He revered a sosa colo and Mandaligo Rosta Cora Vela Mamberego Lorodi. He ravo stamban dungeon dengam bandengungu. He rode a lake at East of Palavero Gumman and the Liga is the Goro. Ye the Gumman and the Laberga de Galadigo. Golo bara bara bale gada di gare fere gado ro bolo ire vana gana mana gada le gadi di gidi stom ben jam van dan del duru sto ire vela bara bara ando lugo sondali singing the Holy Ghost and all the limb and angel the sokali vade ire vada la bada bala di gare di zogo la bala bala di non daive ire van don sam van da je yo galeida yo se yo lava ire yo lava la bala Gadi 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 Here we go, the Dios te calaba dole mande ya ge yo da. Here we go, Dios te calaba mande mo ra ve Dios to la ve da ba la. Re do so ka tal mande di ge lo. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I will say to everybody, praise God. Amen. You give your energy to things eternal. Hallelujah. To things divine. Amen. Praise God. You give your energy to things eternal. You see, how you sing in tongues is up to you. Amen. I often see us sing in tongues and it's always such a low key. Yeah. Yeah. Give your energy. Amen. I will shortly be a 50-year-old man. You need to learn to give your energy while you got it to these eternal things. Hallelujah. On every major key of life. Amen. You throw every bundle of energy, your muscles. Right. All of you for all his will in all the earth to all the people all the time. Praise God. Amen. So I just practiced in front of you. I expect you to practice at home. Amen. Anybody could do what we just did there. If you're full of the Holy Ghost and you are, praise God. You know, you know, as you're sat there now, there's something going on on the inside of you. Yeah. Glory to God. You're ready to go. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I give my energies to things eternal. Amen. I give my energy to things divine. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe one of these days, I might get a, if you get in touch with the guys that sing in church, they will sing you properly for you. Amen. You know, uh, about two years ago, on the morning of my birthday, you know, that song came to me. But it just came as words. Whether young or old. Because you're thinking about life. Now you're, you're now all of 40. I won't tell you what it was two years ago. So it was, it was all of 40. That's more difficult. 47. You know, and then you, and you're just thinking about the passage of time. The things you said you would do as a young boy. With revelation knowledge. Causing tingling sensations through you. I could dawn all you cold. You know. That's where that came, that came from. Whether young or old. 
I give my energy to things divine. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Another line says, whether in good times or bad times, I give my energy to things divine. My energy is yours. My energy is yours. Because he gave me all of him. Amen. All of him. I'm wall to wall, Holy Ghost. Amen. Cell to cell, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right? Every metabolic part of me is Holy Ghost. And beyond that, beyond the dimensions of human chemistry or biology, he shared the totality of him with me. It is enough that all my energy, all my good times and bad, right? He has access to just move through this man and do something wonderful. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't expect to leave this earth. And I'll be sat in a place where men are talking about the moves of God through them. And I'm scratching my head and wondering, is it the same redemption? How? No, it's not going to happen. Amen. You know what Paul said? Paul, Paul gave one CV like that. Dangerous CV. R Romans 4, I said, but let me read that CV to you. I read it to myself more, or very often. I read, it, I read it to myself. It's in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Amen. Praise God. You there? Second Corinthians is in 12. I saw I meant 12, 12. Are you there? Mm -hmm. You there? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. hmm. Now, <clears throat> 12 and 15. I will very gladly what? Spend and be spent for you. I will very gladly. This is at the last words of Paul to the Corinthians. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. This is where the whether young or old came from. Gladly be spent. Gladly. Gladly. Look at this other thing that Paul said in chapter 11, the verse, chapter before. Yeah, it says in verse 21, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, albeit whatsoever as is bold. I speak foolishly, I am bold also. 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Now listen to Paul's I am more. <laughs> I am more. In labors, more. Did you say the word more? Yeah. yeah. So in labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. <laughs> you know what? You couldn't have collected stripes for me. So in stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently in debts often of the jews five times received i 40 stripes save one thrice was i beaten with rods once i was stoned thrice i suffered shipwreck in night and this day i've been in the deep in journeys often in perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils of my own countrymen in perils by the hidden in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirsts, in fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. Did you see that? Right? That is everything for the totality of the gospel. In colds often. Look, that's what Paul called more. Amen. More. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where will the gospel take you? What could the gospel ask of you that the ability of God within you is not enough to meet and to exceed in weariness? Anything you could have thrown at Paul there, he even turned it to yet more. Yet more. Hallelujah. Yet more. Yet more. Yeah, this stuff, that's what it does to us, you know. Yeah, all this stuff is not merely to fill you with knowledge, but it is that this is our life. This is the avenue where we live. Right? You want to read that place that Paul talked about. Read it often. 
uh, so that you know the extent that eternal life in you can go. Yeah? You're unstoppable by weariness, by beatings, by persecutions. You're unstoppable by nakedness, by want or lack. You're unstoppable by good times or bad. You're unstoppable however the dice of life is thrown. You're unstoppable because somebody has dealt with you in a measure beyond human love. You've been loved with everlasting love. It took all of the weariness of Jesus, right, to mount that cross. And he had me on his mind. And so there is another human being on my mind too. That for the sake of the gospel, you know, when, when Paul went to Damascus and they had to let him down by the side of the wall, inside that basket, who would have known that the book of Romans was in that basket? That the book of Colossians, that the book of Ephesians, that the book that has such blessed the churches. Why will you stop one step beyond or before your growth is manifest? Don't stop. Don't stop. Even though the growth is not all too manifest for you to see now. Don't stop because you've been marked down by every single avenue you could think. By every yastic of man, men will have thought it's over for this man. Don't stop. Just keep on going. Get up again. The righteous may fall seven times, but the Lord lifts him up. The righteous must be willing to get up. Be willing to get up because one life, one more life depends on you. One more life. A tale, a story that will be told how God is able to use you to get through to communities. You know, you know, Paul started after so many people as a Christian, but said, I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that worketh in me. Why, why are we this fanatical and fastidious and unrelenting about the revelation knowledge of the grace of God? Because of what it does in a man. Yeah? You become, you, you, somebody says everybody has their prize. I beg your pardon. There are some people that don't have a prize. There are some people unbuyable, unflinching, unyielding. That what could man throw to you or throw at you? Hallelujah. You know, pastor was talking a while ago that you find people, uh, they, their, their jobs or the next salary that they want to get is what determines what they will do. But revelation already grips you to the point where you're unbuyable. By any number, by any amount. You, know, you just know that it is dead on arrival, whatever it is. You know, Paul was talking about Epaphroditus. You know Epaphroditus? He said that for the work of the Lord, he was near unto death. You know what Epaphroditus did? Epaphroditus, at a time when nobody was taking care of Paul, and Paul was in prison. That's Philippians 2. Paul was in prison. Normally the Philippians would have taken care, but they lacked opportunity. And, of course, all the other churches were not even taking care of Paul. And Paul was now in prison. Epaphroditus traveled all the way from Philippi, right, to where Paul was in prison. And Epaphroditus will then begin to get into extra work. It's like Epaphroditus would take on sheep so that the gospel can go to places. That's what Epaphroditus did. That's why Paul said, when you see that guy, hold him in the highest term. You know, we're going to have churches where people will take extra over time to send the gospel in places. They themselves will go. But just said, you know what? How about we flood India, Indian missionaries, with a little bit more funds? Yeah? And everybody says, count me in. 20 hours of my time this year. 15 days of my time this year. All of my holiday, I'm going to work. And then you bring the results and say, you know what? Use this as a church. You put the money together. And we're sending to Bolivia, to, Ma to Mali, to... Yeah? to Peru, we're sending to different places of the earth. That's what Epaphroditus did. When Epaphroditus did it alone, he fell sick, as any man would. He was near unto death. Paul said, the Lord Jesus had mercy upon me. Right? The guy actually walked himself to the bones for the gospel's sake. You know, there comes a time when the gospel grips all of us that way, you know. Now you, your family, everything about you. You just say, we're going to do uh, all my bonus this year for the gospel, right? All my bonus. I'm going to spend, do overtime. I'm going to do overtime from church. Now I'm going to work. I'm from work. I'm coming back to church. And then after that, we'll go and rest. And then we all do that. We just give ourselves, this thing grips you that much. It grips you that much. Praise God. It grips us that much. That after a while, you start thinking in gospel times. You wrap everything around the gospel in you. You wrap everything, your shadow also, you know. 
How about you saying that, you know, uh, 15, 15 days, some of you are working, some of you are not working, doesn't matter. But if it doesn't make sense to you, then it will make sense to you in some days to come. Don't forget what I'm just saying, all right? Yeah, don't forget what I'm saying. You know, I personally am interested in the gospel getting to Japan. Yeah, hit my life like a, to- my life like a tornado. Yeah, I'm interested in the gospel getting to the Arab world. I was in, I was in Dubai on the holiday with the family uh, in uh, February. You know, I bought a jalamiya. I bought a jalamiya. I bought that stuff that they put around there. Yeah. I bought that bit also because we are invading Oman. We are invading Saudi Arabia. We are invading Qatar. We are invading. We are going. <laughs> we are going. You are seeing us. We are tiny in stature but big on the inside. Right? There's an ability, an irrepressible force that compels us to go. Right? It compels us that tooth for tooth, eye for eye, will match every onslaught of Satan. We yeah, will get to communities. I'm expecting to be invited to mosques. I will go. So for they're going to give me a few minutes to talk the gospel too. Yeah? I can sit through their sermon. They must sit through mine. But whatever it takes, we're going to do it. I'm going to. Before I leave this earth, it's going to happen. We're going to be like a tornado or monsoon that descends upon the Islamic world. Yeah? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But it's going to happen. A new kind of smuggler, a new kind of terrorist. What terrorist? Love terrorist. Gospel terrorist. You know? A new kind of man. Yeah? We're God's kind, the Jesus kind. Right? We're the Paul kind. You couldn't stop us with rods. You couldn't stop us with uh, being uh, uh, sunk underwater. You couldn't stop us in the city. You couldn't stop us with oppressive uh, rules or laws, right? If it takes us to the cell, we're going to be there. We're going to come back. We use every single means possible that one more soul might hear the gospel of God divine. One more soul. One more soul. So all the things we're talking about at the back of it, yeah, there's a tenacity of a bulldog. Something that says, I will never let go. 30 years from now, you will see us fanatic about the word. 40 years from now, fanatic about the word. 50 years from now, fanatic about the word. 60 years from now, fanatic still. Yeah, we will be infecting nations, communities, right, with the revelation of Jesus. We will be going as a whole mighty invading force. You know, covering large territories. A death blow to religion, to unbelief. Right, wherever it has rained, as in wherever, right? Because all it takes, you know, our girls are going to go stiletto and all with lipstick on their lips, or whatever they want to go, but they're going to go with a, an ability on the inside, an ability, an endowment on the inside, right? That they hold, they look, they will be a lot stronger than they look because there is no female spirit of God, right? There's no male spirit of God, there's just the spirit. And uh, his sons and daughters, he has made us sons and daughters. And he says, they are my servants. There's no junior Holy Ghost in the sister. The same spirit, the same resurrection, the same father, same, same. Right. So our girls are rising. They are rising like the Phoebe's, like the Priscilla's. They are rising. There's something about the gospel that transcends gender. Right? That's beyond what society asks the girl to be. There's an ability contained in the word of God. A revolution in revelation knowledge. Something feminism has tried to do but can never succeed at. It's already in the word of God. It's already in God's word. And our sisters, you see, uh, dear brothers in this place, why don't you be Aquila so our sisters can be Priscilla's? So they can lay their neck on the line for the gospel's sake too. Now Paul said of them, he says, my great Priscilla and Aquila who have put their neck on the line for my sake. You know, how about we find people that we just say, hey, you, you, you. Those three brothers there, we won't stop night and day until they grow this year. Whatever it takes. We just, we just take men. You just say, my assignment is this, te- all the people in this hall. Yeah, on this one, my assignment. You take that. You take that. And we just take churches. Just visit the church and be like, the, the pastor is going to start speaking revelation all that soon. We're going to pray them into it. We're going to flood them with it. You know, I said we'll use every tactic possible. Every tactic. Whatever it takes. Whatever. Whatever it takes, we'll give it. Praise God. Whatever it takes. Because the ability of love propels us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got to pray again. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we will lend our spirits through the spirit of a living God within us that out through the vessel of our being, you pour forth your wisdom with mighty clarity. Mm, we do thank you. Mm. Amen. Praise God. So, 
Romans in chapter 4. Okay, so you, huh? Amen. Amen. Glory to God is in me now. The Lord of glory manifests through me. Glory to God is in me now. The Lord of glory manifests through me. <coughs> glory to God is in me now. The Lord of glory manifest through me. Glory to God is in me now. The Lord of glory manifest through me. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's in me now. The Lord of glory manifest through me. Glory to God. He's in me Manifest through me, glory to God, is in me now, the Lord of glory in all the earth, glory to God. Manifest through me, glory to God, is in me now, the Lord of glory, manifest through me, glory to God. Glory to God, He's in me, He's in me, Lord of glory, manifest through me, glory to Glory to Jesus, He's in me, Jesus, you're in me now, the Lord of glory, manifest through me, glory to God, glory to God, he's in me. Thank you, Jesus. He's in this place, right? He's in this house. Amen. Romans in chapter 4. Romans in chapter 4. Amen. So, uh, remember, learn to put revelation knowledge into music. Learn to sing it to yourself. You are a being of influence. The word of God can influence you. Yeah. The human mind is proof that man can be addicted to anything. So if you expose your heart to something, make it the word of God. Right?
It says the household of Stephanas, they've addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You read that before? So some addictions are good. It says to those kind of people, 1 Corinthians 16, that was, it says submit yourself to such. Then it mentioned Fortunatus, mentioned Achaicus, right? Formidable men. I'm that kind of man in this day. I'm that kind of man in this hour. Me, myself, myself, my babe, my, my son, my daughter, addicted, addicted to the ministry of the world, addicted, addicted, addicted to gospel things, addicted, 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 addicted to the ministry of the world, addicted to discipleship, addicted to training men, addicted to the world, to prayer, addicted to psalms, to hymns, to spiritual songs. We're addicted to this kind of stuff. That's us, our DNA. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Romans 4. Romans 4. You there? Yes, sir. Romans 4. Look at verse 13. Romans 4, 13. You there? Yes, For the promise. Uh, okay. Let me read so you know what we're talking about. Uh, look at verse 1. Romans 4, 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father so we're talking about who abraham okay then verse 2 for if abraham were justified by works he had whereof to glory but not before god look at verse 3 for what said the scripture abraham believed yeah god and he was counted unto him for righteousness Okay, so it says in verse 3, Now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of a debt. But to him that walketh not, to him that labors not, to him that's not evil, to him that's not wicked. Yes, to him that walketh not, but believeth on God, that justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. And that's, it says in verse 6, that's the revelation of David, right? So now let's now drop down to verse 13. For the promise. The promise. Who will have been the one that made the promise? God that justifies. God that counts in a particular way. He says, for the promise that he, who is he? Abraham. Abraham who was justified by faith. Not relying on his works. So verse 13. But the promise that what? He should be the heir of the world. Oh my God. What did God promise Abraham? See, there are two promises that God gave to Abraham. Number one was what was expressed through the man Isaac, which was a revelation of he that is to come. See, how was Isaac born? Isaac was born from a womb as good as dead. So that is Isaac, birth or life from the dead. So the birth of Isaac is a teaching about the resurrection of Jesus. Right? Then he now said also that there was another promise that was made. So, I haven't believed in the resurrection, which is Sarah's womb, as good as dead. Mm-hmm. Sarah's womb was the grave. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the seed was in the ground. And then it grew in Sarah's womb in the earth three days. And then it came out. Yeah. <laughs> Only God could have done this. Then after that, God then told Abraham, God told Abraham, it says, through you or in you, all the nations, all the nations of the earth, all the nations. Why did God justify Abraham? That was the way that God was going to get to all the nations. What is the purpose of righteousness? Through those men, God can get through to all the nations. So God that cannot lie makes a promise to a man and says, I give this to you. Right? So in Romans 4 and verse 13, that's the, that's the background for what you're reading. Romans 4, 13, for the promise. That means this will take God's performance, right? For the promise that he, Abraham, should be the heir of the world. So what was Abraham to inherit? The world. Abraham was to inherit the world. So that means when Abraham thinks about Egypt, the whole of Egypt belongs to Abraham. When Abraham thinks about Ethiopia, the whole of Ethiopia belongs to Abraham. When Abraham thinks about China, the whole of China belongs to Abraham. 
a righteous man. The whole, why? The people inside those nations. So God was promising Abraham that everybody in every nook and cranny of the earth, Abraham, you are going to inherit them. You are going to inherit them. Everybody made righteous by the work of Christ. At, look at Galatians. Let me, do, let me quote that for you. Look at Galatians and chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, and look at verse 20, sorry, 3. Galatians 3, and verse 29. Galatians 3, and verse 29. What does it say? And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and what? Hairs, according to, what is the promise? Hair of the whole world. So, the moment you are Christ, what have you inherited? Oh. All of Georgia, all of Ukraine, all of Russia, all of Bhutan, all of Nepal, all of uh, uh, Laos, all of Oman, all of Saudi Arabia, all of the, uh, Australia, all of Africa, all of America. So, when we think of these nations, we are thinking of our inheritance. Yeah, because men are the riches of the nations. So God will say, I will give you the secret forces, which are men. God, through redemption, promises men to men. Right? He promises men to men. Firstly, by Christ within you, or Christ the sacrifice, you are born again. Then secondly, you, if you are Christ's, then are you his. According to the promise that God made to Abraham, that I give thee. The nations. I give thee what? The nations. I give thee. Look at Psalm 105. Psalm 105. So to be a new creation, to be given to revelation knowledge. What did we inherit in revelation knowledge? People. 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 We inherited men. God has promised you men in the resurrection of Jesus. Heirs of the world. Heirs of the world. It's promised you men in the revelation of Jesus, right? Or the resurrection of Jesus. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. You are a heir. According to the promise that God made to Abraham, that you are the heir of the world. All of Georgia is mine. All of Georgia. All of my street. All the men in my street, they've been given to me. All of them, they are my inheritance. The inheritance that God has given to us, it is men. Yeah, the inheritance that God, you see, uh, the inheritance that God has given to us is men. The inheritance in redemption is people. People, people. Look at Genesis. Genesis. I know I told you to open somewhere, but we'll get there. Look at Genesis and uh, chapter 12. Genesis and chapter 12. So in the revelation of righteousness, right? In the revelation of righteousness based on Romans 4.13, what we see taught through the story of Abraham is that God made a promise that Abraham is the heir of the world. This is why Jesus said to us, go into all the world, right? Go into all the world. Any place that your feet touches, you know, anywhere I go, the first thing I think about is the gospel. Because I'm a heir according to the promise. I'm a heir. God made that promise to me. And I'm ready. I'm a laborer. I go. I'm a laborer. I go. It actually given the earth, the world to us. That's what is given to us, you know. God, that's what is given to us. Now, um, look at this again. In Genesis where? 12. And look at verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your country, from your kindred, from your father's house, unto a land, unto a land, unto a land, unto a land, that I will show you. And I will make of thee what? A great nation. Right? So God was talking to Abraham about a nation. I will bless thee. 
What will he bless him with? A great nation. And I will make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing to what? A great nation. Now, if you then, if you then go forward to verse, I'm coming, verse Chapter 15. Chapter 15. And you go to verse 5. Or verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham, saying, These shall not be in thy hair, for he that shall come forth out of you, your own bowels, shall be your hair. And God brought Abraham forth abroad, and said, Look now towards heaven. And tell the stars. That's the light in the heavens, right? If thou shalt be able to number them. He said unto, so God said unto Abraham, so shall your seeds be. What is God talking to Abraham about? That great nation. He says, so shall your seed be. He says, so shall your seed be. Right? And verse 6, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him. For righteousness. So embedded in the promise and the realization of righteousness is the inheriting of all the nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. All the nations of the earth. God's plan. Now, come, come with me to uh, um, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. For squato brava gadasa finis ketos, sinifrecata panstigocos, flipraticova spiritasas, sinigisto fracates, elicusto frequista paranga, gandalos of frequitis, semeno, critica factus, muscu, skigvia, kihapta condavangalas, gribaratungolos, pireki, erefoto sepoto humangas kitis. Gleverata, panstore, gripada coholos, yebo. Ambona gudos, gidish tai, galaka, tonso, who will syntike for her brachis tife, hal gabatas. For if you'll open your mind, and open your ears, and open your understanding, he shall fill thee, and cause thee to be full of insight, insight concerning his plans, concerning cities and nations, and peoples, and tribes. For the purpose and the will of God, from all ages past, even from times ancient that have gone by, is that by his son, by the revelation of his son, the eyes of this man and that man, of that other is opened, of that woman and this other, and they begin to migrate. And they begin to go so that the Lord plants them as seed in the midst of people until the seed becomes a harvest. And darkness is harvested as light. Oh, when the enemy comes and tells you it is getting worse, learn to roar with a laugh <laughs> and say, There is a seed that has come out of the ground. There is a victory told long ago. There is the resurrection that has defeated death. And in that I believed, I cannot be overcome. But I go. As his foot, his hand, his eyes, I go as the legs of him into the nations and into every tribe of man. That where man has not heard the news of what the Lord has done, they shall hear, yea, they shall know. Whole communities shall hear in this day and hour what the Lord has wrought, what the Lord has done by his son. And they shall come into droves and come, yea, it will start like it's a joke. But more than a joke is at work, but divine ability and power. So prepare ye for this hour and give yourself a little more to pray and to praise. And from praise go to prayer and with intensity pray yet more. And then insight shall be given unto, do, unto thee. What land you should go to. What place you should abide in. Yea, for some it will start in the very streets, in the byway, where they are at. What a land given by he that can make his promises true. So rely on him and not on the lies of the enemy. For it's not getting darker. It is getting lighter still. The light burns brightly. The revelation of the sun covers the earth and the glory of God is heard of in places. Yea, have you not heard? that the sound of them has gone forth throughout all the earth. So say I'm one of them, and I'm in that tribe, and I'm of that people, I am in that seed, and if I'm a seed, I'm a her, I'm a hair, 
I'm a hair. So I see what the Lord wants me to see. So I will lift up my eyes. And in my God, I will see and know supernaturally and precisely the purpose of plan divine. And I will walk in the revelation of this. And I will walk in the fullness of this until I claim the territory that is mine. And men shall come. And the glory of God shall be seen. And the work of the Lord shall be done. And the churches will be full of glory and grace. For the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I am a part of that. A part of that, Hallelujah. amen. Praise God, Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 105, amen. amen. Glory to God, Glory. <laughs> amen. Glory to God, Glory, yeah. amen. Now, come with me to verse 11, Psalm 105 and verse 11. Um, verse 9, it says. Which covenant God made with Abraham and his oaths unto what? Isaac. So there is a covenant that God made with Abraham and Isaac and confirmed the same unto what? Jacob. So there was a covenant that was known to Abraham, that was known to Isaac, and that was known to Jacob. And to Israel for what? An everlasting covenant. That means this one doesn't change. For an everlasting covenant. What is it? Saying. Right? What is the covenant? Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan. Uh, yeah, the lots of your what? Inheritance. This is a covenant that never changes. It says he spoke it to Abraham. He spoke it to Jacob. He spoke it to Isaac. Your inheritance is the land of Canaan. Now don't forget that in the Bible, the land, the earth is man. Mm -hmm. Amen. The land, the earth is man. So when he said, I give you the land of Canaan. He meant all the people in Canaan are yours. All the people in Canaan. He repeated it to Jacob. He repeated it to Isaac. He repeated it to Abraham. So it wasn't something for only a particular generation. It was perpetual. Perpetual. So when God sent Israel into Egypt, why? So that Israel could harvest Egypt. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you the story behind the scenes. The reason for Israel in Egypt is so that Israel can harvest Egypt as their inheritance. Yeah. The, the purpose for Israel in Egypt was so that, right, think about it this way. There was going to be a famine, right, and the whole earth or that inhabitable world were going to come to Pharaoh. But if, uh, Joseph will have been sent ahead. Joseph, a prophet of God. And Joseph will have been ready and is in the court of Pharaoh. He's in the midst of dark waters. But then he is the man that they said, whatever this guy says, everybody does it. So how many people do you think will have heard? Or, or you know, if you go to Genesis 15, the, 50, the Bible says that Joseph gave a prophecy. The only prophecy of Joseph that is properly recorded. It says, the Lord is going to come. And when he comes, take my bones with you, for you will leave the captivity. Right? So what do you suppose Joseph was speaking upon the throne of the whole of Egypt? For every nation that came when they had no food to hear. That there's a resurrection coming. A resurrection. A resurrection coming. How did God get the whole inhabited world? It's like this. If you wanted to hear, right, the gospel in the ancient times, what would have happened is, where, where was the last Olympics? No, where? Uh, yeah, Tokyo? Where was the last World Cup? <coughs> Qatar. Qatar. So imagine if you were at the gate of Qatar, the Qatar uh, football clubs or the football stadiums yeah. and you had the opportunity to preach the gospel to everybody that came then they will go back to England with the message they will go back to Russia with the message they will go back to Australia yeah. with the message they will go back that's the plan of God yeah. that was what was going that is the reason how did Joseph get there though that one had indiscretion God's plan was not for him to go as a slave 
right? That was man that was uh, walking in jealousy and strife, right? But Joseph said, what you meant for evil, right? God, right, turned for good. What is the good? Indeed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Indeed, all the families. You see, just like uh, Joseph came in contact with his brethren, he would have come in contact with kings and many people, many people. Why? Because that is the covenant that God gave to Abraham, then to Isaac, then to Jacob, then to Joseph. It just means on and on. It's ad infinitum because it said, it said again, an everlasting covenant. So what God said to Abraham, he says to you today, I have given thee Georgia. I've given thee the whole of Georgia. I've given thee your street. I've given thee all of your street. I've given, given thee people. Because that's what God gives. People. People. Look at it again. He said, I'm back in Psalm 105. In verse 11. Saying, unto thee will I give. Notice who is the giver? God. What does he give? The land of Canaan, the lots of your inheritance. That means when we were measuring out what belongs to you, the lot that fell to you was Canaan. The lot that fell to you was Canaan. Make no mistake about it. Why there are people that believed God before Abraham? Were there people that believed God before Abraham? Yeah. Yeah. So what does God do with the righteous? He gives them land. That means he gives them the earth. Or it gives them people. It gives them nations. And say, that one is your lot. That is your inheritance. I promise it to you. Then Jesus will say, go into all the world. Then he will say, I'm with you. Then you will say, I go. Then it will be said, how will they hear except there be a preacher? What will they hear to call upon the name of the Lord? What happened on the day of Pentecost is exactly what I'm talking about. God knew that after 50 days from Pentecost, all the Jews from all over the world, they will come into Jerusalem. So Jesus told them, wait in Jerusalem. Then on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then somebody said, what meant this? Then uh, Peter stood up and said, This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days, in the fulfillment, in the performance. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. In context, what all flesh? All these Jews that have come out of Persia, out of uh, Europe, out of the Middle East, out of the in, uh, Ethiopia. They had come from everywhere. How do you think the minister of the Queen of Ethiopia started making journeys onto the uh, temple to go pray? It's because there are people that took the news of God and they went. Yeah, but where did God place his own people, his own men? 120 of them, he placed them for that purpose in the center of the earth, where all the Jewish world will come, right? And so when, all the, when the Bible says that 3,000 men were saved, that was 3,000 men from Egypt, from Libya, from Europe, all over. Then they stayed with Peter. They stayed with James. They stayed with John. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. They had doctrine. Then they would have gone back onto their countries. That was why lands were sold. Because there were people that had been displaced. That came and they came for a short time. But they've stayed longer than expected to stay. Because they are hearing the wondrous works of God. Right? And then after a while, they all went back to their nations. So the gospel will have gone into Libya. The gospel will have gone into the black continents. It will have gone into Ethiopia, into Sheba, into Kuth. It will have gone into uh, uh, Europe. It will have gone into all of the inhabited continents of the earth. How, what is God doing? The covenant that he made is giving them, Persia is yours. And that's why, you know, all those guys that were present on the day of Pentecost, what they did was that from there, they went on to every known inhabitable part of the world, right? Thomas, 
right? Andrew, Peter, it is said of Peter that when it came time to kill him, he said, you want to crucify me? No, 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 you're not going to do it the way you did Jesus. Do mine upside down. I couldn't, do it. I couldn't go like my Lord. Imagine the man choosing this, that form of death, right? When it was time for his wife to be captured, it is said that Peter spoke psalm after psalm, psalm after psalm, and she went on unto her death. Men of whom the world was not worthy, but men that inherited the world nonetheless. Paul stood in the presence of Agrippa, and Agrippa and Festus stood up and said, you are mad. Too much learning makes you mad. And, P and Paul said, yes, I wish that you, king upon your high estate, you ask me this day, apart from these chains, why I'm a wealthy man in God. I have the riches of the eternities. I have inheritance in God. I am a son of the Most High. I am gifted with things money cannot buy. I have sonship in places where you have none. I wish that you were like me today. Right? That's the way that God does it. As how it gets to nations, to peoples, to tribes, to cultures, he will place his men at the nexus, at the meeting point. So some of you will have thoughts come to your heart. Go to Bolivia. Go to Australia. For once, don't be driven only by money. Be driven by things that money cannot buy. Be driven by dreams and aspirations and desires that makes you a man unbuyable with money. You know that you have a price that is worth the blood of Jesus. And what a man cannot equate to the blood, cannot buy you, cannot get to you. You're ungettable, <laughs> right? You go everywhere. My point is this. That is how God got that gospel. So what will have happened? All the Jews that came will have said, you know the Messiah that we've been waiting for. I had some fellow get up on the day of Pentecost and the fellow was saying that it's the last day that it's done. It's done. That God is showing signs and wonders in the heavens. That guy said that the prophecy of Joel has been fulfilled. And he said that, can you see our brothers and sisters? That God wants to make us family. And everybody would have gone back to their Bibles and were checking it with fever. They say, hey, when did he say he was born? They say, Bethlehem. Uh, uh, what, what, about, what about this? They said, it's true about him. We've checked, we've checked, we've checked. And then they will have come back to say, ho, ho, ho. You've got to learn. You've got to continue in the apostles' doctrine. Uh, my dear friends, our number one inheritance in Christ. The Bible says he has blessed us with spiritual blessings. What do you think a spiritual blessing is? Is a human life. Is a man. It's people's. <laughs> yeah, it's people's. Right? That which it's beyond the, a man's conscience. Yours. A man's heart. Yours. He said, ask of me and I will give thee the hidden for your inheritance. Ask of me. Yeah, it will put desires in you. You wake up in the middle of the night and you have a desire for Iran. You have a, it will start with a desire for your next door neighbor and then your street. And then it gets, the circle just keeps on getting larger, right? Your circle keeps getting larger. You know, Abraham was a businessman. Abraham was a businessman and he dealt, he dealt business. You know, he did some underhanded business too, but he did business. But there was something you couldn't take away from Abraham. He went from, let me show you, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. You there? It says in verse 11, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot. Somebody say lot. The lot, the lot of your what? Inheritance. Verse 12. When they were but few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, verse 13, when they went from one nation to another. So what was it that was common to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? They went from nation to nation. Why? He has said that, he has said earlier, that what? That the land is the lot of your inheritance. So what were they doing when they went from nation to nation, they were claiming the land, right? What is the land? Not the physical, sellable material, but people. People, right? People. They were going from nation to nation, right? People. Are you following? Right? So it says in uh, verse 14, He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. That's Abimelech. 15, saying... Touch not mine anointed. So who is mine anointed? It will be a man that has the revelation of Jesus. A man that has the revelation of redemption. That he now knows that people are his inheritance. And because of that, he's going from street to street. From house to house. 
He is the Lord's anointed. So it says, touch not mine anointed. Yea, do my prophets. That means my mouthpieces. Do them no harm. So that scripture is not for, ah, don't touch that man of God. No, no. It's for I. You cannot mess with the man that God has sent with the wealth of the nations. Right? To harvest people. To harvest men. Touch not mine anointed. Right? Why? Because their message is about the anointed, Jesus himself. So they became one with the one of whom they preached. They became one with that one that they preached about. Right? And so they became called my anointed. So Paul would say that, or Jesus would tell Paul, that why do you persecute me? That means when you touch the least of my brethren, you just touched me. Right? So it says, touch no my anointed. Do my what? Prophets what? No arm. Right? Do my prophets no arm. So what who are they? What were they? Look at Genesis 20. So you see the point. Genesis 20? Genesis and chapter 20. It says in, um, in verse 7. Now this is God talking to Abimelech, a king. Verse 2. And Abraham said, so we're talking about Abraham. Verse 3, God came to what? Verse 3, God came to Abimelech. Now in verse 7, God is talking to Abimelech. He says, now therefore, restore Abraham is, why? He's a prophet. Why? Well, now read on, read on, read on. This is the of his prophet. And he shall pray for thee. Why? That thou shall live and not die. So Abimelech was under the grip of death. The prophecy of, uh, of Abraham will rescue Abimelech from death. What just happened? I, uh, Abraham has gone from nation to nation. He's come in contact with Abimelech. He's now praying. That means he's desiring. Yeah? He's now praying for Abimelech. And as he's praying for Abimelech, it is, you know, Paul will say, you know in the Bible, when you preach to people, you pray for people. Right? So uh, uh, Paul is, uh, say Paul, Abraham is praying. And God told Abimelech, when that guy prays for you, you will leave. In other words, it is true, Abraham, that Abimelech will come to know the gospel and believe the gospel. Amen. Yeah? So now we're in nations. How did God get to? So imagine what will happen after, Ab well, after Abraham leaves Abimelech. All of the people under Abimelech will hear what their king has just believed. Yeah? They will hear. So that is Abraham the prophet. So when he said, do my prophets no harm, it is the man that God can send another man to and say, hey, pray, or minister, or serve. Amen. Pray, or minister, or serve. You know, it's not interesting that Joseph said, what they meant for evil, God turned for good. Meaning that when Joseph had that dream and he said, I saw the stars and the sun and the moon and they were bowing down before me. Right? What is the meaning of that? They thought it meant that you want to just dominate us. But no, it does mean that Joseph will rule. What does it mean to rule? The greatest among you will be the servant of all. So the prophecy or what was seen in the vision was God letting be, uh, uh, Joseph know that you are going to be the one to serve these people, to draw them all out of the death that is going to try to grip everybody. You will go ahead of them. Uh, Joseph understood this. His, his brethren were actually jealous of him. Right? But I'm trying to tell you that that's what that dream stayed with, with Joseph. And he said, what you guys meant for evil, God turned for good. Why? Because God actually made use of Joseph in Egypt's land. Joseph, what is Egypt? Egypt is death's domain. Where Pharaoh is Lord. Right? Obstinate. Ever-changing mind. You know what Pharaoh is, by the way? Pharaoh is the mind that changes. Right? Pharaoh will say, yes, then no. Uh, yes, then no. That is a guy weighing the gospel. I think I'm going to believe. No, no. I think I will. No, no. I'm not quite sure. No, I'm not. That's Pharaoh. So, did you notice that the same language was used to describe Pharaoh and the children of Israel? 
both Pharaoh and the children of Israel were stiff naked. So the Pharaoh, which Pharaoh followed Moses into the wilderness? The children of Israel. You get it? So the children of Israel were Pharaoh. Pharaoh is not just anybody. Pharaoh is the mind that is unstable. The mind that will not agree with the word. Yeah, That's, that is Pharaoh. The, the mind that will not let the people go. Yeah, so that is a man that will hear the gospel and will just say, no, no, no. So the Bible calls that unbelief, unpersuadable. That's Pharaoh. But what, can I ask, ask you a question? Do you think that the man, the physical man that was ruling Egypt called Pharaoh, do you think he heard the word of God or not? He did. How did he hear the word of God? God sent a prophet called Moses to him. So, how did God get through to Egyptians? Through Moses. Right? Did God hate the Egyptians? No. He loved the, the Egyptians. He sent a minister to them. You know, there are places you go. There are, there are corners of the earth you're going to be in. There are people you see today that you might not see for the next 20 years. There are people you see daily. And then one time comes, you move. And then you don't see each other again. But we see each other in the plan, in the will, and the purpose, and the plan of God. You see, the purpose of our moving around the earth is because that is how God gets the nations changed. You know, all that sea I've been talking about. How does God dry up the seas? He will drop a piece of land in the midst of the sea. And from that piece of land, there will be a moving out to drain all the waters. And I'm telling you now how it happens. You will just have a desire to go to Argentina. You'll have a desire to go to, I don't know, to, uh, to Poland. Yeah, you have a desire to go to uh, Madagascar. Some other person will have a desire to go to Mali. Different people have in different places to go. Do not say no when you know in the Lord to go. Don't pray for God to change his mind about what he has spoken to you in your heart. Yield to him. Do not just think economically. Do not think from finances only. Think in line with the riches of God. Men are the wealth of the eternities. When God has given men in your heart, you are a rich man. Going to harvest men as riches. You are not going to objectify people and personify things. You are going to treat things as things. People as people. Because people are always precious to God. People are always, always precious to God. People are always precious. The reason why the people of God keep moving every time is because that is the only way to get through all the earth. All the earth. And God is interested in all the earth. All the earth. The sound of them has gone forth through all the earth. Right? In them has been set a tabernacle for the sun. Right? That means we are the light unto their darkness. Like the sun actually is the light unto the earth. How does God do it? He will place a desire. It will look like a thought at first. After a while, as you meditate on it, it becomes unshakable. You weigh it against every single parameter known to man. It doesn't quite make sense why that thing lingers. That's God talking to you. That's God. That is the love of God beckoning upon you. That is something that will never let go on your heart. They went from nation to nation. They went from nation to nation and they were his anointed. Right? They were his anointed. So Jesus would tell Saul, you have to get out of this city tonight, for they will seek your life. Then he will go to another place, and he will say, stay, because I have men in this city, and no man shall hurt you. I have given this man unto you. Right? God, who is alive, still does that. He still does that. All of Finland, all of Greenland, all of the Scandinavian nations, all of those places where there are only 10,000 people, we are all of those islands where there are people that have never come in contact with civilization. We bring them the life of God. We bring them, they went from nation to nation. They went from tribe to tribe. Yeah, there is a supernatural migration happening on account of revelation knowledge. Because that's the way it is. We will not always all sit down here. This is not the way it works. We are going to be here today. And then in a few months' time, some will go, some will stay. But they are not going as they are, they are lost. They are going to get lost. They are going to get lost. Because the supernatural arm of the Lord that brings salvation, he uses men to get to men. He uses men to get to men. And when a man goes because Jesus said to go, he has become a prophet to those people. Your mouth, the proxy for God. 
your mouth through whom God speaks unto people. Because the promise in righteousness is that men are yours. And so he says, ask of me. Once in a while you break forth into prayer fessel, akulia, gadana, manstonga, gladito, preveres, excadio, gragonda, na mesusu, corobrava, katananze, instiumen and You just pray about it. You pray, you pray, you pray from your heart. You pray as it were, sweats of blood. You pray until every fiber of your being is activated with that vision that you've seen of a people. And like Saul, you see a man from Macedonia. He will appear unto thee and say, Come, help us in Macedonia. And you'll be able to interpret it. The fundamental reason is not to do business, but another kind of business, another kind of transaction, another kind of land acquisition. For the earth is the Lord's. Another kind of acquisition. Blessed be the Lord, the possessor of heaven and earth, the acquirer of men, the hearts of men. He uses his people. He walks through his people. This is the meaning of righteousness. This, when we talk about the finished work of Christ, that is after story. It's not really correct to just say finished work and stop there. He walks in you. Both to will and to do. He has walked. He yet walks. It's not all done. Right, the Lord has done his part. He's within you still doing. He's a doing God, a speaking God, a sending God. We're going people, hearing people. We are a perceptive people. We interpret the leadings and the knowings of God. We are a people that are alive unto God. Reckon you yourself, therefore, to be alive unto God. You are alive unto God. You are vitalized with the reality of Jesus. Yeah, uh, you got righteous. You are secure forever in him so that now your heart is free. You're not thinking... He doesn't like me. He likes me. You know you are beloved forever. Then you are ready to go to the ends of the earth. Whatever it takes, whatever the circumstance or the situation, whole nations, we're going to take it. Whole nations. Whole nations. There are men that will say, you know what? Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Now, you need to understand. <laughs> you need to understand that. Uh, uh, amen. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So it says, look at it again. Uh, we're in Psalm what? One of five. Psalm one of five. Look at that. Psalm one of five. Yeah. You know, God is using me to do surgery in your mind tonight. You know, I, I'm talking not like the other time because this is a different surgery. Yeah, you just leave this meeting and you have a desire in you. You don't know why you like, why you now like, but you will like places. You just, you just find yourself liking. You know, like, hey, ah. In fact, what I'm doing to you now, I don't like it, but you do it. And in doing it, you will like it. The plan of God, <laughs> the will of God, the purpose of God. It is a supernatural theater of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God using our words to penetrate the hearts of men. Sincerely, it was said of Jesus, did our hearts not born? While I spoke, did the tangibility of Jesus not grip our hearts? You see, there are people that listened to, to Jesus for 40 days. The questions they were asking while Jesus was physically around made it look like they didn't understand anything. But he, let me tell you some mathematics. Between Passover and what is called Pentecost is exactly 50 days. Yeah, Pentecost, Pente, five. So Pentecost, 50 days, right? Jesus died and for three days he was gone. That is 50 minus 3. Because Passover is, is dead. So three days after, so three days gone, how many days left? 47. Then when he rose, he taught them for 40 days. How many days left? 7. So when they asked the question, uh, will you at this time give the kingdom to Israel? 7 more days to Pentecost. And in 7 days, the Bible says they got together and then they stood together and they prayed together. And while they prayed together, the things they had heard Jesus teach for 40 days, that were not quite connecting, began to connect in their mind until the day of Pentecost that Peter would stand up and say, this is that. This is that. What had happened? The seed that Jesus sowed, that looked like it wasn't working, it was actually working. Right. There are people you're going to disciple, people you're going to preach to. It will look like it's an, it's a, it's an exercise in futility. But there can never be a, uh, an exhaustion of what the power of love through you can do. All the power of love through you can do. Right? As you are able to go on because the people into whose eyes you look. Who will have thought 
See, let me tell you what it means is it was exactly 50 days from Pentecost that Peter denied Jesus. So from denier, 50 days after, is a mouth through whom light is falling upon the darkness of so many people. Men are saying, what minute this? Do, do you know when last they asked what minute this? You remember the day of Pentecost? They were saying, what minute this? You know, that's the same time they use for manna. That's manna. What means this? What is this? So manna is actually a representation of Jesus as bread. And the men were eating bread and they were like, what is this? What is this? What is this? But he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, right? Which means he that believes in my words has life. So Peter is able to take the word of God. He suddenly can see, oh, what Joel said, what Jesus said, is all coming together now. In seven days. In seven days. No, in 40 days. No, in three years. So what Jesus had been teaching Peter for three and a half years came together. Came together. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged when the truth that you teach to people do not dawn upon them all at once. Do not get discouraged when it looks like the words are falling like water on a dog's back. Do not get discouraged when it looks like your disciples are a sorry example of what the Lord has done. Yea, no, do not get discouraged. But remember that you stand in a long line of men that have believed. Yeah, I will give thee the hidden for your inheritance. How many can you take? One, 20, 30, 50. 100, 1,000, 10,000, keep naming it, and you'll meet the Lord there. Keep naming the number. Keep naming the number. God came to Abraham and said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I do? And he told Abraham, I know that he will order things well. And then Abraham said, for 50 men. Then he said, for 40. Then he went on 10, then five, and Abraham stopped. Abraham stopped. My dear friend, why was God telling so, uh, Abraham about Sodom? Let's see if you're following. Why do you suppose he was telling Abraham about Sodom? So Abraham can go to Sodom. Yeah, so Abraham can go to Sodom. Lot had gone to Sodom, but he was driven by finances. Yeah. He was still a righteous man. Peter said so. But Abraham, God was telling, God, see, Abraham is setting conditions that cannot be met if there are five. How many do you think were in, uh, were in uh, Sodom that met that qualification? One. Yeah, just one. Just one. Why was God telling Abraham? Because Abraham is God's partner on the earth. So they can go from town to town, from city to city, Right? But Abraham stayed at home. Abraham didn't go. And the Bible says the Lord remembered Lot. Will you not be funny that Abraham in all he was saying, did not even say, ah, my niece is there. My nephew is there. Just for my nephew's sake. Abraham knows uh, Lot is righteous. And he stopped at five. You know, uh, Lot's family is a dangerous family. Because firstly, wife turns the pillar of salt. Yeah. You know he's not talking about cooking salt. Anyway, well, let's leave that. <laughs> he turned to salt, and then the two girls, two daughters, right? They, when they escaped, they actually got pregnant by their dad. They orchestrated their father impregnating them. If Abraham had gone, Abraham would have taken those girls with Lot the day before. The day before, before. And they would have come in, uh, to the presence of their great uncle, Abraham. They would have seen that the other fine boys... Daddy is not that fine. <laughs> right? And they, sincerely, that, that is the influence of God. That is the influence of God. You know, God uses you to get through to people. Yeah, many times, many of us, we pray. After prayer, you know, your prayer sometimes is the reason you can't sleep. Mm. Eh? But then, you are like most people, you then drink Milo or Bombita to sedate yourself into a sleep. When there are things that God wants to talk to you about. There you are. You've had a very tough day. 
And for reasons unexplainable, you are woken from sleep. And then you quickly inject yourself back with bombita, And then you go back into sleep. You know. But the Lord speaks to us. The Lord speaks to us. The Lord does what? He speaks to us. The Lord speaks to us. The is a sending God. We're going people. All of this earth. All of this earth belongs to us. All of this earth. All of this earth belongs to us. You know, you find yourself in prayer. As you pray more on the Holy Ghost. I mean in tongues. As you pray more in tongues, you discover that the names of streets, of people that you've not talked to in a while, will begin to come out through your mouth. Because, you see, God will use the mouth of you to talk to you. Because he's not external to you, but in you. What? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? So your mouth is the pulpit of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will witness to you through your mouth, through your mouth, will minister to you the things to do, the step to take. All of this earth is ours. All of it. All of it. At the beginning, you would think financially. Then as you grow spiritually, you would think in human, you would think of human capital. You would think of men as the riches of God. And then you are making the move you are making on account of men. On account of men. On account of men. Glory to God. On account of men. Turn with me to Acts and chapter 1. Acts and chapter 1. Remember, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. And you are a heir according to the promise. What is the promise of life? The promise of what? Of life. You are the promise of life, which is the life for men, which will be the promise of the land, the people, the people, the people, the people are ours. The people, the people. We must dare to see that. God will go to Sodom in the footsteps of Abraham. Amen. God will go to Samaria in the footsteps of Philip. He will go to uh, Antioch in the footsteps of Barnabas. He goes today. He goes today. We are on the move. We are on the move. See, it is not only supernatural because you went to India. Going to your next door neighbor is as supernatural as going to India. When the motivation of your heart is the love of God. Men are not more precious outside Georgia than they are in Georgia. Right? Men are not more precious where you see somebody tilling their own land. There's a land given to you by the Spirit of God. You've got to learn to tend your land. The grass always looks green on the other side. But you've been given a lot, an inheritance. How about you get spiritually smart to know this is my land? The Bible speaks about a particular fellow, Eliezer, the son of Dodo. He said he defeated, he defended a piece of land until his hand cleaved to the sword. He will not let an enemy have that piece of land. You know, that's man. That's the way you should contend. Epaphras, one of you, always laboring. Always laboring for you in prayers. That you stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Then he said, say to Archippus, in verse 17 of Colossians 4, that he should take heed to fulfill the ministry that has been committed unto him. Where did that utterance come from? From Epaphras' prayer. As Epaphras prayed, right? Archippus will be stirred up to stand in the will of God, which will be that he fulfills the ministry that has, he has received in the Lord. Amen. He fulfills the ministry, what? He has received in the Lord. Look at Acts. Acts and chapter 1. Acts and chapter 1. I'm going all the way to verse... Uh, Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to verse... 16. Men and brethren. Yeah, that is... Uh, what's his name? Peter is talking, right? Remember, the believers are gathered. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost 
by the mouth of David speak before concerning what? Judas, which was guide to them that took or arrested Jesus. 17. For he was numbered with us, and he had obtained what? A part. A pa you see that word part? Check your Greek concordance. You'll be amazed what it means. For he has obtained a part of what? This ministry. He had obtained a part of ministry. So ministry is a part. Right? Uh, yeah, Judas had obtained a part of this ministry. Now, yeah, then um, uh, we had obtained a part of this ministry. Yeah? yeah what has he obtained? A part. A part. So, anybody checked it yet? Yeah, what does it mean? A share. A portion. What, what do you share? Land. Inheritance. So, Peter is saying, that ministry is an inheritance. Or ministry is, there is a parcel of land. You then begin to say, that one, that one is yours. You see that section? That's your own. This section, that's your own. So when, when the Bible says that they entered into the land and they divided it according to tribes, what was being discussed? Ministry. Ministry. That was ministry. They were to go into Canaan as ministers Georgia Canaan US Canaan Togo Canaan right Congo Canaan Oman Canaan ministry is you have a part take that piece of land and build the house plant vineyards I always told them that when you go into that country you plant vineyards. How do you plant? Bible will say Paul planted. Apollos watered. And then there was a harvest. God gave the increase. It's ministry. It's ministry. That whole story of Abraham, sorry, of uh, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones in their generation that were ready for that ministry. They were the only ones that were ready. I'll be ready in my generation. I'll be ready in my generation. Whatever it takes, however long it takes, whatever claim it makes, however the energy is required, I'm fully supplied. His ability is with me, I'm ready. I was born ready in the new creation. I was born ready in the sacrifice of Christ. Right? I will take my parts. I will take my parts. Yeah, I will. I will know the part that is mine. Right? Then I will do it. Yeah, I will build houses there, right? Men will dwell in those houses, which is the nations will come into the mountain. They will find a hedge, a resting place. Hallelujah. They will find a resting place. They will find a resting place. Let me read you something in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, are you there? Jeremiah and chapter 7. The point I'm making to you is all the earth... Is an inheritance. Jeremiah 7. Follow me closely. Jeremiah 7. And I am in verse 21. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel. Put your burnt offerings. Unto what? Your sacrifice. And what? Eat flesh. Okay. Stop. Who, when the people make sacrifices. Who is it for? People, people. It's people. It says, take your sacrifices. Eat it. Who is going to eat it? People. Yeah, human beings. Okay, listen carefully. Verse 20, what now? 22. Listen, why did God say that? Look at verse 22. For I speak not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning what burnt offerings or sacrifices. So were people taking burnt offerings to God? Yes. Did God tell them to bring it to him? No. No. Who needed the burnt offering? Man. Because normally burnt offerings an animal, you barbecue it, somebody eats it. Now, so now, so who was the sacrifices for? God or man? Man. So if God asks you for a sacrifice, 
Is he telling you to bring it to him or for you to take it to another? To take it to another. So who is the sacrifice of God for? Man. Jesus, the sacrifice was for us. Not for God, for us. So when you say that Jesus is a sacrifice, yeah, of God, it is not a sacrifice you present to God, but a sacrifice God presents to you, so you eat. Yeah? The, it is for us. It is for us. It is for us. So sacrifice is providing service or providing a meal or providing food or providing sustenance for another man. Sacrifice. So sacrifice is not about sin. Sacrifice is about ministry. Sacrifice is not about sin. Sacrif the sacrifice of Christ was not to appease God. The sacrifice of Christ was to appease your conscience. It was food for you. Right? It was food. Like that lamb was a food for the whole of Israel before they approached the sea of death. So that they would, number one, defeat death uh, in the person of the angel. And secondly, they would defeat death as they pass through the waters of death. And they will have a dry land. The food. So God said, mm -mm, mm -mm. these guys are bringing it to me. I don't need it. Right? It's not for me. Guys, eat it. Take it and eat. Take it and eat. It's for you to eat. So sacrifice in the Bible is, come back, are you following? So sacrifice in the Bible is ministry. Ministry by God, through man, for man. Right? It's not something that you bring to God. God has nothing, nada, zero, zero to do with it. Look at Acts and chapter 17. Acts 17. Acts 17. You there? Acts 17. Are you there? Will you let me go? Acts 17. You there? Mm -hmm. And we're in verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is what? Lord of heaven and earth. You get what that means now? He is Lord of heaven and earth. He dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So whatever you are building was not for God, right? That's the point. He dwelleth not in temples made with what? With hands. 25. Neither is worshipped with men's hands. That means there is nothing that man could bring to God to get through to God. Right? Neither is worship with what? With men's. Are you there? Are you following? Neither is worship with what? Men's hands. As though he needed what? Anything. Including the sacrifice of Christ. God did not need any sacrifice. He needed nothing. He, he needed nothing. Nada. Zilch. Zero. None. Why then the sacrifice of Christ? You know what I was saying earlier in the afternoon? That he entered, he took the sacrifice, Jesus, and he entered into heaven. Even your conscience. So that your conscience can eat good food. Can eat good food. You can eat the meal of life. Of the tree of life. Of the water of life. Of the living waters that flows out of Jesus. And be made alive forever. Right? Sacrifice is not for God. Sacrifice is for man. For God does not need any such thing. Hebrews. And chapter 10. Hebrews and chapter 10. So the fact that God does not need it does not mean that we don't bring it. Did you get the point? Yes, sir. Okay. What do we not bring it for? For sins. You got it right? Yes, sir. Hebrews 10. Look at Hebrews 10. Don't choke. Don't, just don't bail out on me. Hebrews 10. It says in uh, verse 4. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away what? Sins. Yeah, could never. Yeah. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not. Did God want it? No. But a body you have prepared for me. For who? For man. He, God doesn't need it. He says, Go on in burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, you have no pleasure. Right? So, including the sacrifice of Christ, if you think it is to beg God, God has no pleasure. Not at all. But it is for man. It is for man. It is for the sacrifice is for man. Look at Ephesians and chapter 5. Ephesians and chapter 5. 
Ephesians and chapter 5. So when Israel was told to kill the Passover, who was it for? Israel. It was for Israel. Let me ask you one more time. When God told Israel to kill the Passover lamb, who was it for? I, I, I tempted you there. Listen again. Where, what was it? Who was it for? Everybody. Everybody. Every, if the Egyptian enters into that house and they eat that lamb, they are safe. They are safe. They are safe. Amen. They are safe. So, you know, a mixed multitude left them with, left Egypt with them. Right? Because they were secure by that meal that they ate. God is getting through to the nations. And then Rahab told the spies, we have heard of thee. We had heard of what God did. Can you see? So, the, it's the gospel all the way. Right? Rahab, Harlot, then becomes righteous because she received the messengers with peace. So, why did God send them to Jericho to get Rahab 1, Rahab 2, Rahab 3, Rahab 4? You call her prostitute, God calls her believer. You call her all sorts, God calls her woman. And she's secure. Secure in the Father's love. God is not sending us to kill the nations. So when the disciples said, will you that will call down fire to consume this? He says, you do not know what spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come for that. Amen. I often tell people that if you follow, if Jesus followed uh, uh, Joshua into battle, as everybody is falling down dead, Jesus will be raising them up. Those will be like, for how can you save those that you first killed? Right? You know, how could you save those that you first killed? So when they were persecuted in Acts 4, he said, Lord, behold, their threatens. And then that they may fall down dead, no, and grant unto thy servants with all boldness that we will make more noise. The noise that got us into trouble will be bold to make it again. Right? Because that is the way to take the land. The heart of the apostles, the heart of the uh, when the apostles were preaching, who do you suppose they wanted saved? The very people that had beaten them. You, you know, in Acts 4, they had been beaten. What was on the mind of God? That those fellows that manhandled the apostles, they will eat the lamb. And they will come out of death. They will go from uninhabited land to a land filled. That was the dream of God. That was the dream. That is the dream of God. The hidden for your inheritance. He said, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine vain things. The kings of the earth are arrayed together against the Lord and his anointed. Right? What was that quoted over? They just beat them for preaching. Then they prayed. And the place where they prayed was full of power. Then they went. They went back to the Sanhedrin. They went back to persecution. They went back to unease. They went back because we are able to go up and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. We are able to take, go up and take the country. We are. Hallelujah. In our day, every square inch of this earth covered with the revelation of Jesus. A new breed of man filled with revelation knowledge. With the passion of God. With the urgency of the hour. We will go. Praise God. We will go. So it says here, it says here, right, that the, uh, the, the guys actually were able to go to different places. Different places. Different places. Because we are people-minded. Again, the sacrifice is not for God. Look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians in chapter 5 and verse 1. Be you therefore followers of God. As dear children. So because you're a dear child, you follow him. That's what he's saying. You don't follow him to be a child. It's because you're a child, you follow. The word follow there means to imitate, mimic, copy, copy, copycat. Yeah? So we copy God's ways because we are his children. So what is motivating him is motivating us so we can replicate him for he's in us. He's our papa, our father. Yeah? So Ephesians 5.1, it says, Be you therefore followers of God as what? Dear children. Say, I'm a dear child. I'm a dear child. Now, what does it mean to follow God? Read verse 2. And walk in love. How do you walk in love? As Christ also loved us. Who was the beneficiary of the love? Us. And has given himself for? Who, was, who did he give himself for? 
Uh, uh, how did he give himself? An offering for who? Us. Now, so a sacrifice to God. What is a sacrifice to God? For who? Us. So the sacrifice to God does not mean what you take to God, but what God takes to man. For us. For us. Right? So what do we then do? We also walk in love as Christ. That means we take our sacrifice and we take it to who? To man. In the nations, we take it to men. We take it to men. Now, hold on. Uh, Genesis and chapter 4, and we call it an evening. Genesis and chapter 4. Hallelujah. We are ready to give it all it takes. Genesis and chapter 4. Right? Look at verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the what? Of the fruit of the what? Now, what is the other name for ground? Earth. So the question you should ask yourself is, which ground? From the story, what ground do you think it is? Empty ground. Yeah? So that place is not talking about, he planted cocoa yam. And he harvested cocoa yam. Go and say, me? Cocoa yam? What about blood? I prefer blood. Go and bring me barbecue. I prefer it. No. Because God never commanded anybody to bring a sacrifice to him. Right? Yeah, the Bible talks about sacrifice here. Yeah. They brought of the fruits of the ground. So what did he bring? He brought his sweat. He brought his labor. He brought his toil. He brought the works of the law. Right? So he, said he brought it as an offering unto the Lord. What can the Lord do with that offering? Nothing. Absolutely. So it's rejected. Yeah? First Peter 2 5 says that we are a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. What does God accept when what you take to men is the sacrifice of Christ? Now, okay, so, but what did uh, 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 Abel, uh, no, Cain bring? Cain brought toil, right? Toil. Now, it then says in verse 4, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, of the fat thereof, that's a priest. And the Lord had respect, that is a sacrifice acceptable to God as his offering. What is the offering for? For God or for men? Now, listen to me carefully. Who was the sacrifice of Abel for? Think about what we just read now. Who was the sacrifice of Abel for? For men. Read that story again. Who was that sacrifice for? Yeah, man. Uh, name the man. Cain. Cain. Yeah, yeah. Cain. Cain is the hidden. Cain is the hidden. Cain is the world. Cain is the earth covered with dark waters. Cain is the earth that is empty in Genesis 1. Right? Cain is the man that eats of a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Cain is the opposer of God. Right? Cain is thorns and thistles. Cain is weed. Cain is that which God cannot approve. Uh, how does God get to men he cannot approve? He uses men whose sacrifices are acceptable unto him by Christ Jesus. So Jesus, therefore, in Luke, refers to Abel as a prophet. He said, from the blood of Abel, the prophet. So who was Abel speaking to? Cain. So when God asks Abel, or Cain, where is your brother? He's referring to his ministry to you. What have you done with it? And then Cain reveals himself. I'm not my brother's keeper. So I'm not, I'm not that minister you can use. And then uh, it's God then says, I hear the blood of Abel. What is blood? The life of. The ministry of. So God is still using the, uh, the ministry of Abel to get through to Cain. God is trying to turn the heart of Cain through the ministry of Abel. How does God get to people? When the Bible says God had respect to the sacrifice of Abel, that means God has found a priest. Somebody he can use. He has found waters. You know, when you read Genesis 2, it says that there were four rivers that came out of Eden. And they went into the corners of the earth. That river is called Abel. That river is called Noah. That river is called Enoch. That river is called uh, Noah. That river is called Abraham. That river is called Siku. That river is called you. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. There's a river that flows 
from the throne of God in the heart of man. There is living water bubbling forth within you, everlasting life. The waters of that river goes into all the earth. You know, from where we sit here, we know that we can take the country. We know that we are having the hearts of men. We know that we can ask of the Lord and it will give us supernatural strategies. It will teach us, instruct us, help us, enable us. We'll partner. There were partnerships formed here. There were men that will do things to the end of their lives. There were men that will meet other men. Their hearts will be knit together. They will be like Peter and John, like Paul and Silas and Paul and Barnabas. They will go to places, go to societies, to, uh, to uh, environments, and they will take the revelation of Jesus and do what a mighty work in the love of God. The earth, we are heirs of the whole earth. We are heirs of the Father. We are joined heirs with the Son. What did we inherit, uh, inherit in the Son? The whole world. The whole world. How big is your vision tonight? How big is the dream in your heart? How big is that which makes you get up in the morning? What is your mojo? What excites you? What wakes you up? What tears you? What propels you? What causes you to get up in the morning? What makes it hard for you to sleep at night? You scream out the name of men in prayer. You get on your knees and you know revelation knowledge will get to that territory. That the heart of this man will respond to the revelation of Jesus. So Paul would say, I cease not to make mention of you in prayers. Or in, uh, yeah, uh, uh, to pray for you. Then he will begin to pray for the land to be fruitful. He will begin to pray for the hearts of men, for their eyes to open. Their understanding energized and enlightened. They are, you, are, you are seated or sat, as we say in England. You are sat in the midst of peoples. You know, who knows? Imagine somebody that sat beside Abraham long ago was actually sitting beside what will populate the whole of the Abrahamic nations. All of the Middle East, just one man. Imagine what happens when you speak to a man that God tells you to speak to. For will instruct your heart to speak. God has need of nothing. We have him. He has us. We are partners. He put his spirit in us. He said in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power, the Holy Ghost in you. Then you'll be witnesses unto the uttermost part of the earth. Unto the uttermost part of the earth. Why did God put his spirit in us? So that through us, he can get into the nations. How is God claiming the nations? How will he get to Jordan? How will he get to Syria? How will he get to Russia? How will he get to Norway, Peru? How will he get to Mexico, Argentina? How will he get to Canada? How will he get to Northern Ireland and Ireland? How will he get to Wales and Scotland? How will he get to Germany? How will he get to Lithuania? How will he get to Georgia? How is he going today? He has put his spirit in us. And by giving us his spirit, he's given us the whole world. With his spirit in us, there is no extent we cannot go to. There is nothing that we cannot commit ourselves to that we might get one more life. Beyond one life, the harvesting of all nations, all tribes, all people, all communities, by the spirit and the power of God. So I pray for the men under the sound of my voice, that your word will burn in your hearts like fire, that a communication of a spirit of truth will wake them up, stand them up, that they will walk on this place, that the contagion of God will be manifest in their hearts, that there will be men that never let go. Giants of men will be raised up from here. They will raise giants. They will raise men that will communicate the gospel with more clarity and power. They will raise men that have the very eyesight of God. Supernatural things will be real to their disciples. Their disciples will see the tangibility of God. Men of men. Women of women will come forth from them, from their stable, from their communities in faith. They will raise mighty giants. And men, lives, people will be changed supernaturally by the power of the living God. That from this place, in this place, the work of God will be done. The herald will be sounded forth. A mighty evangel shall go forth. The hearts of men supernaturally changed. Hallelujah. The nations are house, Father. We believe to receive. Men changed, transformed, supernaturally energized and enlightened. That those that have given up with this sat here today will awaken to the revelation of Jesus like never before. They will walk in the fullness of your own spirit's power. They will take hold of that. They will lamb and all. They will take hold of that which they have a comprehension of. The indwelling, the riches of God. I will take over the nations to your glory. Hallelujah. Amen.